Hello and thank you for joining us for this week's track guide for Daily Race B. We are once again around Interlagos in the Group 3 cars but for 6 laps this time uh, racing hard tyres and since the change to the Daily Race we've now got fuel on times 1 and also tyre wear on times 1 so ever so slightly different. But as we have done this track a lot, I've got something a little bit different in today's video. We're going to do a comparison between two different cars. So we've got the uh, Peugeot RCZ up first, which is a really good stable option if you want something that's nice to drive and that you're going to enjoy being in. The Peugeot is definitely a good one to go for. And then we are going to have the Yeetle, which as you can see in the background footage is what I did this race in. Uh, this car is absolutely wild, but if you can tame it, it's so, so quick. Um, straight away I shaved a lot of time off of my qualifying. So. Uh, if you want something uh, that's a little bit stable, like I say, or you're not the most confident, definitely go for something like the Peugeot. But if you're feeling a little bit mad and you want to get a really good quality time, then uh, go for the Beetle. But let's jump into the comparison now, see how it all works and what the differences are between. Here we go with the sensible option to start off with. And there's a couple of little tricks with gearing here which are going to help uh, save you some time. So, as normal, just before the 50 board, we're getting on the brakes for Turn 1. Waiting until you come under the bridge before you start turning in and down into second, make sure you catch plenty of this kerb on the inside and then nice and early on the power. You want to turn across the right and abuse this kerb, lift and then short shift to third and then you can use a little bit of this kerb on the left to help you with your rotation. In the RCZ you are going to be revving the gear out so you really want to maximise your speed by uh, revving each gear to the, the limit. Our next brake marker isn't the 100 ball but the path just after it so as you get to that grey path on your right hand side, heavy on the brakes are you second just for a moment to turn the car in, clip this kerb and then short shift to third and get on the power. That's definitely the best way in my opinion to get a good exit out of that corner is to uh, short shift to third gear. And now a bit of a tricky corner here, we've got just before you come to the 50 board you want to turn in nice and early, about 40-50% brake down to fourth, then the car's going to want to come out and you're going to use third gear to help pull it back in and then get on the power just as early as you possibly can. Uh, you used to short shift to fourth up here, but I feel like staying in third is best. Brake on the tyre marks, down to second gear, cut loads of this kerb on the right hand side as long as you keep your left tyres over on the kerb and they don't come on the grass. Little burst of power in between that right hander and the hairpin, keep the car nice and tight on the inside, then once you're about halfway round you can get heavy on the power and accelerate out using this kerb on the right for runoff. Uh, next brake marker is as the green Astro on the left narrows down, get on the brakes there. I use first gear quite early just to rotate the car but then short shift to second and you can accelerate really again quite early as you're coming around that corner in this car and now come out to the right hand side a little bit, turn in, short shift to fourth with a little lift and then you can accelerate out and it's about halfway between the end of the kerb and the 50 board that you want to go on the brakes there, down to second and then again short shift into third for your exit. Definitely you want to exit this last corner in third gear because uh, you're going to get a much better launch in the long run uh, without having to shift up into uh, yeah from second to third. Not the best brake marker with that last corner now that they've changed the grass there. It is about halfway between the end of the kerb and the 50. You just have to kind of get used to what's comfortable for you. So that was good enough for a 132.2, which I was really quite pleased with compared to my previous lap that I'd set on uh, the RCZ in months gone by. So that lap's going to pay out in full speed now, and then we'll jump back in afterwards for the lap in the Beetle.
Now then, for the brave of you for the Beetle lap, uh, one difference here is you want to downshift quite aggressively in this car, so I get on the brakes again right just before the 50 board, but downshift really quite quickly, wait until you get under the bridge, turning in, exactly the same line as before, I go a tiny bit wide here, which cost me a, a tenth or so, but um, same again with the lifting, short shift into third as you cut that kerb, and you're going to want to use this kerb to rotate the car a lot more, so even though the Beetle oversteers when you accelerate, it does understeer quite a bit as well, so make sure you use a little bit of that kerb on the left to help get the car turned around. Exactly the same breaker marker for this next corner, just on the path there, again downshifting really quite aggressively, use second just for a moment to help the car rotate, but then down to third, uh, sorry, up to third, and then accelerating out for a good exit. Now for this next double right hander you're going to need to be a little bit more careful when you're feeding the power in this car as even in third gear it will light the wheels up so just before the 50 board half brake turning in nice and early catch this kerb on the right hand side down to third but then as you're feeding the power in just be a little bit more cautious and make sure that you're maybe short shifting to fourth like I do there just to give yourself a little bit more grip. I did also need to use first I found to turn the car in uh, for this right hander and then again shifting back up to second gear and exactly the same thing here when you're feeding the power in so we keep the car nice and tight just the same as before we're going to feed the accelerator in about halfway around this uh, this hairpin but be really careful you see I delay the full throttle just that last 10% is the difference between uh, what will send you over the edge in this car exactly the same as well uh, with this corner using first to rotate the car but then short shift into second and being careful as you feed the power in I have a bit of a moment that's come out of here and I felt like I was going to completely lose the back end and short shift into fourth, bit of a lift and then power in and you can actually use the grass runoff here quite a bit so I didn't do that in the RCZ lap but in any car you actually get quite a lot of grip even out on that grassy bit so you can use that to give yourself a better exit and 100% you want to short shift to third on the exit to your final corner in this car because uh, second gear is just absolutely ferocious so uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the track guide there thanks very much for tuning in if you've stayed in for both laps and please do consider coming over to JBo Racing to subscribe and uh, like the video over there that got me down to a 131.6 which is a massive improvement compared to the RCZ time so hopefully that helps you all out with your lap times and good luck in your qualifying thanks very much